sustainable use of Africa's oceans and seas, the theme for the third annual conference of African Maritime Administrators. In the next 30 minutes, we'll bring you highlights from this event, which took place in Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital territory. I'm Oni Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a gathering of maritime administrators from Africa, in line with the International Maritime Organization's policy to assist and enhance the capacity of maritime administrations in Africa. Nigeria is playing host to the conference for the first time. AMA is also a veritable continental institutional framework for peer review to discuss maritime governance in our continent, develop an implementation framework for a pan-African maritime policy and strategy, take leadership in controlling our continent's maritime domain and promote intra-African partnership to address our peculiar maritime challenges. We have a collective responsibility to promote new awareness and appreciation of the inevitable role maritime transport and the blue economy can play as a nebula of the economic development of our continent. Africa is looking up to this conference and we cannot afford to disappoint our people. The conference is not merely to praise the maritime sector of Africa, but to tackle the maritime problems being encountered in the continent. It is regrettable that despite Africa's enormous maritime endowment, we remain susceptible to a raft of challenges. These include insignificant share of cargo, low tonnage, piracy, sea robbery, undeclared and unregulated fishing, and environmental degradation. Worse still, there is no African flagged vessels taking cargoes and our waterways still wallow in servitude. The African human capacity is greatly underdeveloped, leaving us to rely on foreigners to drive our industry. There is also near total absence of trained coast guard to monitor our maritime domain. The challenges are many, but not insurmountable. As things stand, Africa's fishing grounds are being pillaged, its waters are polluted, and piracy is heightening maritime insecurity and causing increases in the cost of insurance and freight. At the same time, the regulatory and legal frameworks to properly, marriage, to properly manage maritime resources and overcome these challenges are still inadequate. Similarly, we are yet to fully develop the human and institutional capacities required to respond appropriately to these challenges. Many difficulties, but incredible opportunities. As the speech is rolled in, the crux of the matter is brought to the fore, the need to address Africa's maritime challenges in order to maximize sustainable use of its oceans and seas. Top of the list is securing Africa's waters from pirates and intruders exploiting the continent's blue economy. We have serious problems with what we call IUU fishing. You know, illegal, unreported, and unregulated. IUU fishing, it's a huge, huge problem. It's, if all you need to do from uh, Victoria Island, take a helicopter, as you take off, just look out towards the coastline, you see hundreds of vessels, what are they doing? You don't know. So the authorities need to find out what's going on, you know, as they say. So it's a huge problem because you don't have the facilities to track, police and monitor. So this is part of the national, you know, responsibilities. African countries have a shortage of technology, shortage of human resources who are competent enough to exploit these resources. Foreigners are coming with their vessels to exploit it. We don't have equipment to, I mean, to, for surveillance. So we are being, ex I mean, uh, the resources are being exploited unconsciously. My discussion today was to make sure that we come up with a strategy whereby we can defend ourselves to make sure that uh, our resources are for African. You see? So how can we do it? I suggested to the audience that uh, we can uh, come up with a, an African Maritime Development Fund. As our forefathers managed to establish African Development Fund, we can develop a fund which will pay attention to the development of maritime domain. Clearly, the safety of Africa's waterways depend on the availability of skilled manpower to coordinate maritime security. One, the continent is lacking. 
across Coast Guards, navies, and maritime safety and security agencies, the effectiveness of policing operations is, pre is uh, premised on a doctrine which I call Trinity of Action, that is surveillance, response initiative, and law enforcement capability, as represented by that triangle. In terms of surveillance, Africa is on the rise. Many maritime domain awareness uh, facilities, electronic sensors are available. I did a, an assessment. The assessment revealed that for the continent to be well manned, you need nothing less than 780 offshore patrol vessels available in the inventory of all the African navies and coast guards, including MARACs combined. Right now, what do we have? Just about 280 maximum, assuming all of them are operational. But we know that is precise, that is not the case. Not only foreign vessels. Some countries also do have national vessels, national fleets, who are also involved in IUU fishing. And IUU fishing can even happen at the artisanal fishing sector. So I think that uh, maybe the problem, as he said, is implementing the treaties, the agreements we sign. This is the most, most main problem. But unfortunately, in some countries, there are uh, so many challenges that even sometimes they cannot have fuel for the, the, the patrol boats. The conference did not address just challenges. It was also an opportunity for countries to get it right by sharing their experiences. Ghana has acquired the Vessel Traffic Management Information System, which you call the VTMIS, and was fully implemented in 2014, where comprehensive and continuous surveillance of Ghana maritime domain and to ensure the protection of Ghana maritime resources, including offshore installations and projects. And we have provided maritime safety for vessels and installations, including subsea structures within Ghana maritime jurisdictions and beyond, providing maritime security for vessels and installations in Ghana waters, and assisting in the prevention of ship source marine pollution. In addition to the maritime, Ghana maritime having the control centers, we've also given access to Navy the Narcotics Control Board, the Fisheries Commission, the Ports and Harbors, uh, Marine Police, and the Inland Waters, so that we can all be in the same uh, uh, level of understanding. We share this information, not only domestic, but also sometimes for the foreign uh, uh, partners. And I think that was mentioned by the speaker yesterday with regard to the relationship between Ghana Navy and the uh, Nigeria Navy in the arrest of certain vessels. Security is one of those areas that require constant, pre constant presence and surveillance. Now, um, you would know that we went, the world went toward um, the long range identification and tracking to ensure that all coastal countries are aware of what is happening within their maritime domain. Um, we have moved a step further to implement satellite automatic identification systems. Now, um, that allows us to see, to monitor what's happening out there. And we have, um, we, we, we superimpose various technologies so that even when people hide their identity, you still can see them. Now, that has managed to cut a lot of cost for us because when we intervene, it's on a targeted basis. We first monitor and if we're picking up any suspicious activities, that is when we send out physical intervention in the name of the Navy or the Coast Guard and all those and all the like. Developing skilled manpower and infrastructure required to secure Africa's waterways isn't cheap. According to speakers at this conference, it can only be achieved through regional integration. The absence of regional integration in Africa's maritime sector is costing the continent a lot. 
After the break, we'll bring you more from the third annual conference of the Association of African Maritime Administrators. Stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching highlights from the third annual conference of the Association of African Maritime Administrators. Now from security to trade facilitation, the discussion continues on ways to improve Africa's maritime sector. The relationship between trade and economic growth cannot be overemphasized. While most countries in Africa trade with the rest of the world, intra-Africa trade remains significantly low. Trade between Africa and the rest of the world has increased by 200% since the year 2000. But the African continent and its regional economic communities have recorded less intra-regional trade than most other regions of the world. According to data from the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, inter-Africa trade amounts to only about 14% as compared to interregional trade among Latin American countries, which is 22%, Asian countries as 52%, and Europe at about 70%. I don't see why uh, we can't import from Ghana if they have it. We must produce. If Africa is producing, then there will be regional trade. And when there is regional trade, then there will be vessels to carry those goods. So the issue is production. According to delegates here, a lack of coordination among African countries is responsible for the continent's abysmal share in total world exports. This must be addressed if the continent aims to take a position on the global maritime scene. Not all developing countries have managed to take advantage of the trade opportunities that come from globalization and increased trade facilitation, according to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. The economic performance for developing economies in Africa remains below that recorded for developing countries as a whole. Africa's share in the total world export was 3.1% in 2007, and this year has been decreasing since the 1950s. High trade cost and supply side constraints may be one explanation as to why countries in Africa are not able to take advantage of trading opportunities. One measure to address these constraints is to invest in physical infrastructure that is essential to carry out production and trade, so as to allow traders easier access to international markets. The administration at respective ports in Africa is another matter that calls for attention. It is common practice for ship owners to berth at any port other than their intended destination. This is owing to inefficient administration at the ports. The development in international trade and transport has been promoted by several factors. Tariff and other barriers to trade have decreased through multilateral negotiations in the World Trade Organization and through regional and bilateral agreements. Maritime transport systems have also evolved to today's container ships taking advantage of economies of scale. The cost of maritime transport have declined over time. The issue is uh, openness, automation. You have to cut out the uh, time, you know, time is of the essence in maritime trade. The processes and the procedures, they must be uh, uh, very meaningful uh, and attractive. Uh, don't uh, forget that there are a lot of uh, competition among the countries, among the ports, or even intra, you know, uh, port uh, uh, competition. So these processes and procedures, you know, must be simplified, um, then you have to make them uh, simply uh, attractive so people will prefer there should be a preference to a port because of its efficiency. 
delay of cargoes at resident ports due to a lack of infrastructure, incentives and bottlenecks that disrupt business at some African ports have led to what is commonly known as diversion of cargoes. We have the port of Lome, the port of Bede uh, and other ports, you know, people said that things are diverted to this port. It's not diversion, it is the shipper. The shipper has the right to take or to order his goods to be discharged in a port that is economical to his desire or to his needs. It's, a, it's an economic decision. Therefore, Nigerian ports must be efficient. It is not uh, a thing to be decreed. It is uh, a function of uh, competition. The call for regional integration goes beyond boosting trade within and outside the continent. According to some participants here, no African country can build a strong maritime sector alone. The need for skill development beyond borders was also a matter of importance if the continent aims to develop the required skill set in its maritime sector. We are in IMO concept and Nigeria is there. Yeah, and we need some other uh, countries to be there because this this, this organization, International Maritime Organization, is very important for us. And also what I'm thinking about, we have to be there in the council, okay? So if we are going to be about five, six, seven countries there, we have to sit together, we have to make our strategy, we have to make our uh, planning strategy, and we have to speak with one mouse word. And so we will insert so cooperation together, putting a strategy, putting a roadmap, okay, going to the international organization and they saying that we are African countries in one mouse world. This is the first. Secondly, education. Education. Education is the first and the last. Without education, without training, you will not be on the ground. You will not. For example, all the resources will be ours. All the resources subject to politicians and so on and so on. But the member, see, where is, where is South Korea right now? Samsung, Samsung A to 2017. And nowadays, Samsung S8 and Samsung S8 Plus, okay? Investment only in the manpower, okay? Only just a metal, base of metal and some IC and so on. But the way that they are losing, we have to do that. And also we, 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 have a, we have a brains, we have a mental thinking, we have to do a think tank. After all said and done, the aim is to develop a maritime sector that will in turn provide job opportunities. I caught up with the acting CEO of the South African Maritime Authority, Sobantu Tilai, to get an insight into South Africa's strategy for job creation in its maritime sector. In 2014, we launched a project called Operation Pakisa, and that's for the speeding up of the development of the maritime economy. We had government coming together with industry, training institution, and research, and said, what are those barriers that need to be attended to? And so we went uh, for the maritime transportation and manufacturing sector, looked at all those issues that would need to be dealt with, looked at oil and gas, looked at um, aquaculture, and looked at the governance structures that we need to, 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 to be dealing with. And um, that is beginning to show a great deal of result. Firstly, the decision-making loop goes much quicker. Secondly, you can see the investment. And thirdly, those areas that we all agreed on as a country, we've managed to focus on them. And as a result, we've seen the number of seafarers that we're producing grow. We've seen the number of jobs that are created in the shoreside marine um, infrastructure development program growing. We are by no means where we want to be. And for reasons that um, then the oil price started slowing down, which means all the offshore oil activity did not live up to the, the expectation. However, we are very confident that um, we are where we needed to be. And when the economies recover, we are going to have had a very good head start. 
As African countries pledge their commitments to agreements made at the conference, the association arrived at a unanimous decision to elect the Director General of Nigeria's Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Dakuku Peterside, as the new president of the Association of Africa Maritime Administrations. Uh, you are aware of the enormous task uh, behind uh, this particular election. And uh, this will serve as a platform for us to rally around other African countries and uh, Europe, Asia, to, so that we can get elected to the second, uh, to the uh, class C of the International Maritime Organization. While Nigeria is taking the presidency of the association, the South Africa will continue to maintain the secretariat. It was also agreed that uh, that is the fourth association of African Maritime Administration coming up in 2018. The postal right is given to Egypt. I can assure you that I've been around the globe on international conferences for over two decades. But without mincing words, this is the first time I'm really seeing participants keenly engaged and determined to take it beyond just resolutions. Action points have been outlined, as just like the previous conference, action points are already being planned to be followed up to the latter, point by point, with records and reports to follow. And uh, we're very confident that this won't be an exception. The conference was also an opportunity to unveil the new Nimasa logo. The new logo, if you notice, at the middle of the new logo is a compass which shows directional growth. Nimasa will be leading in giving directional growth to the industry. And outside it is a wheel to steer the maritime industry. Now you have an anchor which symbolizes stability. Nimasa's function is to bring stability in the industry. And within that you have the anchor is split to two different shades of blue color. One represents the sky and the other one the ocean. Twin two twin elements that we deal with every day in maritime, both the sky and the ocean. No doubt, regional integration is key if Africa is to improve its presence on the global maritime scene, from trade facilitation to the removal of barriers that make it impossible for countries to communicate. Well, that's it on this CNBC special highlight from the third annual conference of the Association of Maritime Administrators. I'm Onyi Sunday. Thank you for watching.